Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Over the past few weeks, I've noticed a number of pen reviewers. They've been doing like top five, top three lists of their favorite pens, least favorite pens. So I thought, yeah, Gary, why not do one? And I thought what I'm going to do is do a top five list of pens that I would rebuy. What I'm going to do this week is look at pens under 50 Australian dollars. So these are on the more affordable side. And yes, I know affordable, it's a very personal thing. What is affordable to one person is really outside the price range of others. But I had to draw a line at a number. So I thought, well, we'll start with under $50. Join me now down on the mat and we'll take a look at these top five pens. Welcome down to the mat. So the top five pens under $50 that I'd rebuy. That's one of the criteria. The other criteria that I've added is I can only have one pen from each manufacturer. Otherwise, I've got to be on this chance that the door you now. This was one of the hardest ones I had to pick. So I've got under 50, I've got 50 to 100 and then over 100. But I really did struggle with this because I've got so many pens and so many nice pens that was hard to pick the top five. The idea of this video, these are the five pens that I would rebuy, you know, should something happen and I needed to rebuy them. We're going to start with the Jinhao 100 Centennial. Can't really see it on here. I'll move the page out of the way for a second. This is in the white color. I've got three of these. This is how much I like these pens. Very, very nice pens. I like this white color. I can use any ink with it. It's like a cracked ice type color. Just undo this. It's a cartridge converter pen. There we go. That converter comes with it. We've got that little o-ring, so we've got a little bit of a softness when we get down near the bottom. The material carries on here into the section. Then we've got this number six standard Jinhao nib. It's a medium nib. Again, one of the things I like, I can get a medium nib. I'm not limited to fine and extra fine, which some other Chinese manufacturers seem to put that limit on it. Let's just do a quick writing sample with it. This is Ayush paper. It's an A4 notepad. It's 100 GSM paper. Very nice. And it's also got a little bit of a texture to it, which I also find quite nice. So we've got here a Jinhao 100 Centennial. With a medium nib. This cost... When I bought it, 25 Aussie dollars. I think the price has gone up a little bit though. Not that much, but still be aware it may have gone up. The ink is by Kobe. It's the only ink I've got by Kobe. And it's a number 60. Foreign Museum Mint. This green, really nice. I actually quite like this. It's only a sample. And I've, this is my last bit of that sample. Don't intend to buy it again, though, because I've got a lot of other inks that are in roughly the same color family. Drying times. There's immediate. Fairly dry looking. There's 10 seconds. Virtually dry there at 10 seconds. I'm going to do 30 seconds just for completeness. Oh. I wonder if we're running out of ink. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, I think I'm running out of ink, but let's do 30 seconds again. Well, now we're a lot wetter, so obviously the issue was the, the ink. So I'm going to just write this was 30 seconds. I'm going to do another immediate. Yeah, that's a bit better. So this is immediate. And then I'm going to go and do one minute. After a minute, still smudging a little bit. I'm not going to do a two minute test. Don't you just hate it when a pen runs out of ink or is about to run out of ink, when you're, especially when you're filming a video. Let's see if I've got enough for my writing sample. I can feel it and see it running out again. 
oh, we just made it. That's a shame that's running out because I actually quite like it. It's a nice bright green. I might try something like Diamond Sherwood Green or another similar green colour. You know, because I quite like green in here. One of the issues I have had with this pen, you can actually see here. See the red staining? The first ink I put in here was red. And I dipped it into the bottle to fill it. And it stained the whole section. And I've washed it a few times. I've even put it through an ultrasonic cleaner. Just can't get rid of this red staining now. So what I do when I'm filling this one up is I actually use a blunt nose syringe and I fill up the converter to try and prevent any staining going forward. Still a nice pen. I say I've got three of them. Really love them. So that's the pen that represented Jin Hao. Pen number two. This one's going to represent Moon Man or Marjon. And when I bought this, it was called the Moon Man M800. So now it's a Marjon M800. There's four different colours in this pen series. I've got all four. Absolutely love it. It's, I'm going to be honest, it's one of my favourite pens. Very nice pen. Just look at the way the colour's coming out. It's another one with a cartridge converter. I had that on a bit too tight. There we are, the converter on. Full of ink, this one, so hopefully we won't have any issues with it drying out as I'm writing. Again, the section follows on the colour from the rest of the body. The section on this, the pen itself, it's very, I'm not going to say it's a clone, but it's very closely copied from the Leonardo Memento Zero line. And on there, it's got the section from the original Leonardo Memento Zeros. I love this section. I find it so comfortable. My, I hold my pens down at the bottom. I just find my, my finger and my thumb just sit so comfortably. And there's nothing to dig in. Very, very nice. The nib on this one, it's a Moon Man nib. You can get these with a Bok nib. Only comes in fine though. So I do have two with a Moon Man nib and two with a Bok nib. But saying that, one of the, the other Moon Man nib that I've got on one of these is now being swapped out and I've got a Yoho nib on there instead. Love that as a combo as well. So we've got here a, I'm going to call it Marjon because that's what it's called now. And it's the M800. We've got a fine nib on there. This cost 35 Aussie dollars. I'm deliberately agitating this because I believe this has got some shimmer in it or at least some sheen. The ink is by Diamine. And it's called Upon a Star. Part of the Infant Series inks. Quite nice, a really dark blue, which I think goes really well there with the body. Drying times, so we've got immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds, one minute. After a minute, again, teeny stem out of smudging. Let's write the sentence. I absolutely love writing with this pen. It's so comfortable. It's got a really nice feedback. Now on here, as I say, this paper's texture, so that feedback gets even more enhanced. Very, very nice. And for $35, I think it's well worth the money. Let's take a quick, hopefully we'll see this on the ink, certainly on the first M. Got a gorgeous red sheen there coming through in that ink. Very hard to see on the rest of it. Might come over better on the camera. I often find that it does show up better on the camera than it does uh, to my eye, mainly because I'm shooting a very, very bright light here. But that was representing Marjon, that Marjon on Moon Man M800. So I move up the paper. Pen number three. So this pen, we're jumping away from China, which is where the last two was, over to Germany for the Kaveco Sport. Again, I move the paper over to one side. Pen with white on white, it's hard to see, so... Here it is on the table. This is, well, obviously it's a, like a transparent white color. 
very very nice very small I mean there is my hand if I open this up this pen I've got a cartridge in here and what I do is actually refill the cartridge each time with ink I use a blunt nose syringe for that I do have a converter the converter is tiny so you don't get a lot of ink in it so I tend to stick with the cartridge and then refill it it's plastic on plastic so it is possible that you could try eyedropper in this I don't have any intention of doing that you know I, I'm just not sure I mean there's plenty or oh, it feels like there's plenty of threads but they don't seem very deep so I'm not sure I mean I'd certainly still look around grease if I was going to do that unposted this is a tiny pen you know I can use it like that for a word or two but not for writing a sentence when it's posted it's actually not too bad it's a pocket pen it's designed to be used like this it's designed to be posted this is a pen I take it with me virtually everywhere to be honest because it goes in my cargo pants pocket along with a little uh, B7 I think the size is notepad so I've always got paper and pen if I need it so this is the Kaveco Sport you might be able to tell it's a 1.1 stub nib I absolutely adore this nib in this pen I've got a broad nib in another spot. It's all right, but this, wow, I just love this. I paid 35 Aussie dollars for it. The ink, it's by Diamine. And it's another ink vent, so I'm going to write there, it's an ink vent ink. Put that in practice, shall we? And it's called Yule Log. I mean, here you can see the difference that this nib's making. So we've got the broad down line, but the narrower cross lines. That's an immediate drying. This is 10 seconds. Fairly dry con though, isn't it? 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds, that's nice and dry. Let's write our sentence. I absolutely love the line this puts down you know let's compare this against the one above just look at the character that comes through we've got yes we've got some shading coming there through from the from that ink I don't think there's any sheen or shimmer in this one no, I can't see can't see anything but it's the line variation makes such a difference such a pleasure to write with I've now got a number of 1.1 stub nibs really enjoy all of them so representing germany and kaveco here we've got the kaveco spot move this to one side because we've got yet another white pen there's actually three white pens today so we've had two of them so the next pen we're jumping back to china representing hondian we've got this this is the hondian n8 this is in the flying feathers so hopefully you can see this we've got the barrel is, is sort of translucent semi-translucent I can see the converter through there the cap it's this solid white but then we've got I don't know if it's it feels like it might be inlaid or it might be laid over or printed on but we've got these nice silver feathers and the silver colored trim looks really nice as I've already said you can see that converter there we are it's another pen look let's make sure we've got plenty of ink in this one put that back on number six size nib it's a Hongdian nib quite pretty decoration on there I also like that the section matches the cap and which matches the end there one thing I don't like about the section its shape it's nice and wide it's wide enough it just still seems to feel flat so 
I like the sections where there's a little bit of a concaveness, which helps to let your fingers rest in the middle. So this is the Hongdian N8. Again, we've got a medium nib in this. The cost of this pen was 41 Aussie dollars. The ink is by Diamine. And it's Sherwood Green. This is a green ink that I'm considering putting into that Jin Hao 100 network. Well, certainly, I was going to say when it runs out of ink, it has run out of ink. I do like the green ink in there. I think this white and green actually looks quite nice. I mean, I've got two of that combo in this selection. Drying times. So there's a media. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Still got a bit of a smudge. One minute. Yeah, after a minute, that's nice and dry. We'll write our sentence. That's a smoother nib than a lot of the others. It's still some feedback, but it's it's not dragging on the page. Whereas some of the others, certainly they felt like they were, I was having to force them to go over the paper. Whereas this is just nice. I will be honest with you. It was a bit of a toss up for this one between the N8, which is what I'm using, and the N7. The N7 is a piston filling version. Slightly different shape, but not that different. The only thing with the N7, it's a fine nib. And I just don't like the fine nib as much as I like this medium nib. And it's that what pushed me over. Strangely enough, the N7 is actually more expensive as well. But this was the Hondian family. Just moving the page up. So we can get the last one on. Let me just move that a little bit more. Just start to move my preview screen so I could get that so we can look at the last one. So the last pen, this is representing Twisby. So this is a Taiwanese manufacturer. This is the Eco. I've got, ooh, I want to say three, might be four Ecos with different nib sizes. This one's got a fine nib. Not one of my favourites. Not saying it's bad, just saying not one of my favourites. I've got in here gorgeous orange. I thought orange to go with the orange colouring. It's a demonstrator pen. I love that. I love seeing the ink. No, I can't help but slosh the ink around, which is what I'm doing now. Very, very nice. Piston filling pen. One of my downsides with this, that piston mechanism takes up half the barrel. So if you like using the VAC 700R, which is a vacuum mechanism, you can fill virtually the whole barrel. Here, to be honest, you're lucky to get about half. It's a small nib. I think it's number five size. I believe the nib is made by Yoho. They're nice nibs. I mean, for all that I say, I don't like it. I do. It's just not my favourite because I prefer broader nibs. I like in here, we can actually see everything working. So we can see there, we've got the, I've got a column fans. I can't remember what the real name is. My brain's just gone dead on me, but I can see the orange there sitting in the section. Very pretty. So we've got here, a Twisby Eco with a fine nib. If it was through choice, I'd get either broad or a 1.1 stub. But this is what I've got inked up. And I say it's nice, it's all right. Just not exactly perfect for me. 44 Aussie dollars though. So the most expensive, but it's still under that $50. Now this was $44 when I bought it. It may have gone up because I've had this pen a couple of years. And I say I've got, I think it's three. And normally I've always got at least one inked up at any particular time. The ink is by Robert Oster. Robert Oster is an Australian ink manufacturer. 
and this is just simply called orange. Is what it says on the box, it's orange. Drying time, so there's immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, that's already dry. I love using this combo because it does dry so fast. So when I am taking my notes, my tricky little questions videos, um, you know, I do, I do spend quite a bit of time researching them. I normally write between 20 and 30 pages of notes, um, A5 notes, not A4. But I've been using this whilst it's got ink in it because I just find the orange, it's a nice color to read. It's not too bright, it's not too pale. This is a nice orange color. And I also find that with it drying so fast, I can easily switch pages, you know, so I don't have to stop at the end of a page, wait for it to dry before I can turn over. Let's write our sentence. I do like the jovial queen being able to get her own back on those grumpy wizards who've made her drink that toxic brew for the other four pens. It's about time she got her own back. Nice feedback. Bit scratchy. That's because it's a fine nib. I accept that. It's not a major issue for me. I actually like feedback on a pen, so I don't mind that. I say the only reason I don't like the fine, my preference is for broad nibs. You know, I do have a medium in this. I do have a broad. I love writing with a broad nib. This fine, it's it's okay. It's good. It's still nice. And yes, if I could only get a fine, I would have no second thoughts. I would buy that fine nib. So this is the Twisby and it's the Eco. Let's just swap over the view and I'm going to fetch in the five pens for one last look. So the top five pens under $50 that I would rebuy. Jinhao 100 Centennial, the Marjon or the Moonman M800, Kaveco Sport, Hondian N8, and the Twisby Eco. If you were to twist my arm and say, Gary, you can only buy one of these, I would instantly reply and say, the Kaveco Sport. Of these five pens, this is by far the pen that I most enjoy using, that I most enjoy the way it writes, and more than happy that I would buy another one in the same configuration, maybe a different colour, but with a 1.1 stub nib. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your top five pens under 50 Australian dollars that you'd rebuy? I'd be really interested because that also means that if there's pens on there that other people would rebuy that I don't currently have, I can add them to my list for future purchase. Please drop a comment down below Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.